for me. Um, and I'm going to hand it over the virtual mic to Peyton and Rebecca for their next skill session. Rebecca and Peyton, I'm going to give you a warning about five minutes to about 4.55. So, just so you're ready. Thank you. Blake. Howdy, everybody. And thank you, Blake, for the introduction. Um, I guess we'll start with introducing ourselves. So let me get the PowerPoint up. More. Share screen. Share. All right. First, uh, before I move on, can we maybe get, you know, thumbs up from a couple people that they can see the PowerPoint, just like a thumbs up. Zoom has a thumbs up as well for those that don't have. Okay, that's good. Looks like I'm getting thumbs up across the board for most people. So that, that's good. So uh, Rebecca, your slides first. So I'll let you introduce yourself first. All right, hi guys. My name is Rebecca Kleesner. I am from Gaines County. So I go to Southern High School. That is my school's one in the left-hand corner. As most of you can tell, pretty involved with 4-H in my county, um, but I'm also involved with Special Olympics. That's something else I'm really passionate about. Um, some things that are really important to me are my friends and my family. So that's a picture of the council. We've become pretty good friends. And those are pictures of my family. I come from a pretty big family. And something also super important to me is my faith. So in the top left-hand corner, that is a picture of me at my church camp. All right, uh, I'm gonna introduce myself if you're done, Rebecca. All right, uh, so hello everybody. Uh, I've said this like three times now, but uh, hello everybody. My name's Peyton Luring. Um, I'm from Hancock County. So that's one of the donut counties surrounding Marion County or Indianapolis. Uh, I live like 20 minutes away from Indianapolis. So I basically kind of live there, but kind of not, um, but, uh, on the screen, there's a couple pictures of me, um, and also in the middle, there's a lot of shirts that I've collected from 4-H events, so there's a lot from when I worked at the State Fair as an exhibit hall worker, there's one from my 4-H camp, Camp Shackamack, uh, Citizenship Washington Focus, uh, last year's SJLC, National 4-H Congress, all of these great experiences, I really recommend them. Uh, you meet great people, like the guy cut off over here uh, <laughs> on this slide, uh, Jonathan. Uh, I met him while working at, um, as an exhibit hall worker. So just you meet a lot of great people on these trips. Big recommend. Um, but we're going to move on to sort of the purpose of this um, presentation. So Rebecca, I'll let you take that. All right, so when thinking of the future, our minds tend to automatically go to thinking of applying, excuse me, applying for college, and then on top of that, scholarships, and then after college, you have job resumes, and then job interviews. But have you ever thought of, like, what will get, to, get you to that point? So the purpose of this skill session is to kind of teach you the mindset that you need to achieve those goals and also how using your current activities such as 4-H can also help get you there. So we will start with Peyton. Yep, so uh, my presentation is about the importance of having a smart work ethic. Uh, so a work ethic is comprised of a lot of various traits. So, uh, some of the most noble ones, at least to me, you know, discipline, tenacity, perseverance, but also, in my mind, the most important is also sustainability, which is going about achieving your goals in a realistic and also sustainable manner. So before I go on to the next slides, um, I'm gonna open up chat here. Um, what are some other um, traits of a good work ethic that you guys can think of? You can feel free to un unmute your mic and chime in with a few, or you can type in chat if that's easier for you as well. Landon said teamwork, that's good. Honesty, that's good too, from Lucy Redman. Um, those, are, those are very good. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to add? 
All right. Uh, I'm not seeing anything else, so we're gonna move on. But those are those are good. Those are a oh, responsibility from uh, Alice Alice Pickett. Thank you. Um, but sustainability helps us avoid a lot of things. It helps us avoid overworking ourselves, but it also helps us avoid procrastination. And I know sort of what some of you might be saying, you know, procrastination, I don't do that. I get all my stuff done on time. And um, you're probably right, you are getting stuff done, but you know, are you doing it as effectively as you can? And the answer is probably no, and there's nothing wrong with that, because even if you think your system is perfect, the way you go about things is perfect, there's always room for improvement. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, there's nothing wrong with having room for improvement. So before I go on it with this slide, um, this might be relatable to you know, some of the fellow students here, fellow high school, maybe even college students, you know, how many of you, when you're preparing for, you know, an exam or a test, how many of you uh, find yourself sort of cramming because you procrastinated last minute and now you're preparing, you know, just cramming all this stuff in last second, you know? You know, show of hands. You know, there's there's nothing wrong. I know, I know, I find myself doing that. You know, and I, oh, Thomas, thank you, <laughs> Thomas, with the thumbs up. Thank you, Thomas. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. You know, even even giants stumble. You know, it's fine. Uh, also, for this just came in uh, for another trait uh, for a good work ethic is patience. That's also really good. That's from Anna. Thank you, Anna. Um, but what Let's see. So applying sustainability in the short term, um, sort of uh, Marty Lubdell, a previous psychology teacher at Pearson College, um, touches upon this in his lecture, Study Less, Study Smart, where he claims it takes around 25 to 30 minutes for us to lose focus on what we're studying. And I'm compressing down a bunch of what he's saying. But the solution to this is pretty simple. It's just walk away for five minutes and then come back. Um, and he goes way more into depth. So after SJLC, you'll have the option to download not just my presentation, but everyone else's. But in mine, uh, this little Marty Lubdell's name, you can click on that and I'll take, him, take you to the full presentation. It's very rich, very in depth. I highly recommend you look into it. It's helped me a lot. Um, but I know, you know, a lot of what I'm saying isn't groundbreaking, but still some of us still find ourselves, even when we apply tactics like this, we still find ourselves procrastinating or not get studying it as much as we can. And that's because, you know, work ethic goes both ways. You know, it goes in the short term and the long term it goes in avoiding procrastination, but also avoiding overworking yourself and burning out. It goes both ways. So how I keep myself uh, sort of on track, on pace in the long term is I use a massive whiteboard and I just write down everything on that. And, you know, that's how I pace myself. And the reason I do that is I feel it touches upon three important aspects of pacing yourself long-term. So we have, you know, we have sort of realizing all the small things that lead up to your goal, but also it helps me keep myself responsible, but it's also not pushing myself too hard where like I'm gonna burn out and I'm not gonna get anything done at all. But it's also easy to revise too. Uh, it's just a whiteboard. So you just wipe, write down a new thing and boom, we're, we're back in business. But before I continue on, I know I've been asking a lot of these questions, but I really love seeing what other people do to keep themselves on track. So what are some ways you guys keep yourself on pace in the long term? You know, do you have a planner, calendar, you know, you can chime in, voice, text box, you know, don't be, don't, don't be shy.
can I use a planner during school? Um, but for your suggestion, I have recently been using a whiteboard with a calendar on it, and that's been really helpful during the summer. Oh, that's good. Uh, Thomas, he sets alarms on his phone to remind him how, himself to do work. That's really good. It sort of holds yourself accountable. Use a calendar. That's that's really good too. Everyone, I think everyone should have a calendar, you know, physical or on your phone, everyone should have a calendar. Uh, but to move on here, Abigail also uses a calendar too. Um, yeah, every, everyone should use a calendar. It's just common sense really. So I, I recommend whiteboard, but everyone has their own way of going about pacing yourself and that's that's good too. But what some of you, and I, this is more me thinking internally here, you know, what you're saying here, you know, you're repeating advice, which is given like a thousand times over, you know, what are you trying to get with this? And I, I dealt with this question a lot while making this because it felt like I was just reinventing the wheel like six times, 500 times, you know, I'm not breaking new ground here. And then I remember something, I have no clue where I heard this from, but this really helped me put a lot of things into perspective is it's often the most real and true things that we need to be reminded of the most. So remembering to not burn yourself out, not to procrastinate, you know, that's something we always need to be reminded of. Um, Lucy Redman, I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure. I, I think she's referring to the keeping yourself on pace long-term. Um, I, I really recommend looking into that though. It's something to keep yourself on pace long term. But on the, uh, I guess to end off here, you know, I can show you graphs. I can show you studies on like how important it is to have a smart work ethic, working smart and all that. But none of that is as convincing as just saying, you know, by improving yourself, improving your work ethic, you make yourself a better person to go out into your clubs, your community, your country, and your world in the truest sense of 4-H. And by improving yourself, you make yourself a better person, more able to take on the challenges that are presented in those environments. So uh, I'd like to uh, pass it on. We're gonna play a little game of Jenga because I feel that represents a lot of this balance, you know, that we're talking about work-life balance, you know, um, work-life balance, you know, and also dealing with the consequences of others, you know, and just being reasonable. So how this is going to work is Rebecca has a Jenga tower. Let me restart my watch here. Rebecca has a Jenga tower and I'm just going to call out your name and you will say what block number you want removed from the tower. And we're just going to also talk what Thomas said. It'll be easier if you pin the, her video so that it's not really small on your screen. You can also put it in speaker view so that when I speak, it'll show up bigger. And if you are having trouble seeing the numbers, they're all numbered from one to 39. So you can always take a guess. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to start with uh, Travis. What What do you think, buddy? Eighteen. Eighteen. Oh, he's typing. Okay. All right. Okay. What about? Uh, let's do Philip. What do you think? Nine. Okay. Uh, Alice? Oh, wait. I lost track of the... Okay, Alice, what do you think? What block should, what, what block should fall next? Will not fall, be removed. Hopefully not fall. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want that. Eleven. Eleven. All right, good job. Uh, Abigail, what do you think? Um, 35. 35. 
That's way at the top. That's a good one. We're fine with that. So uh, what about Olivia? Olivia Barr, what do you think? Um, five. Five, that's way down at the bottom. This may be the end. This may be the end. <laughs> I'm trying. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that was actually, believe it or not, that was better than average. Don't feel bad. We had one that literally <laughs> lasted 30 <laughs> seconds last round. So that good job, everybody. Okay. So with Jenga, the reason Peyton and I chose the game is because there are a lot of factors when you play Jenga that aren't in your control. For example, when other people choose numbers, and in this case, you had to depend on me to move the blocks in. It can be hard to depend on other people. And so in the future, there are some things that you can't control. Um, and so you have to kind of learn to face those obstacles when you get to them. But there are things that you can control to benefit your future. And one of those are the activities you're in. And one activity most of us have in common is 4-H. So I am going to teach about different opportunities in 4-H. And you may know about some of these, but others you may not know about. And the ones you do know about, these are maybe some ways to advance them. So this is pretty much about what 4-H can do for you. So why in the world would this be necessary? Some of you may be thinking, oh, I do enough for 4-H. Like here I am at SGLC. But that's not always true because 4-H can benefit you in so many ways. Because when, like I said, when we do think of the future, we automatically go to college applications and job resumes, but, and putting 4-H member on your resume is, it'll work wonders, but it's the same as any other 4-H or you put 4-H member on their resume or really any other extra, extracurricular activity that somebody puts. But what you do in 4-H will set you above the rest. So like imagine being able to sit in an interview and talk to the interviewer about everything you've done in 4-H. So every 4-H member is involved in their county, but what can I do for you? So you can be involved with your club, you can be in multiple clubs, and you can also do projects. So for those of you that don't know what a 4-H project is, there are a lot of categories to choose from and you can do a hands-on activity that you turn in at the fair. And these can help you discover your passion. For example, you can do a scrapbook or you can do posters about animals or anything you're passionate about. Or you can do anything from STEM to public speaking. So those are really cool. But there's also kind of a design your own experience option. So if you see something you really like in another county or you see a project that you really think would be cool, bring it to your county. And this is kind of a way for you to use your passions and get them around you. So for example, my county saw a color run as a good opportunity and we brought that. And we also have well-connected communities that I'm involved with that helps improve the health of our county. So those are really cool. The opportunities are endless. And there's also state level 4-H. So how could that benefit you? So you're all involved with state 4-H right now because you're attending SJLC virtually. Um, so for example, you're learning about leadership and having fun at the same time, but there are also other opportunities such as band and chorus and performing arts. And you can also attend all kinds of summits. Um, and best of all, you actually form connections with 4-Hers from all over Indiana, as well as adults from networking opportunities. For example, you'll get a networking opportunity at, at SJLC. Now, like I said, our minds typically go to scholarships when thinking of the future. So there are scholarships available through Indiana based on what you've done in 4-H. So you can look at these categories and start thinking now, is what I'm doing, will that be beneficial for these scholarships if that's something I want to pursue? Now beyond Indiana 4-H, there's also national 4-H. So there are three trips that the state of Indiana sponsors. So that is Citizenship Washington Focus, National 4-H Congress, and National 4-H Conference. 
So these are really cool opportunities. You'll form connections with 4-H members all over the United States. You'll meet all kinds of new people and you'll learn, for example, at CWF, you learn about what it means to be a citizen and at Congress, you learn about different cultures and diversity. And you'll also gain travel experience from traveling to these events. So there's also a Youth Summit Series. This is at the National 4-H Conference Center. So based on what you're passionate about, you can attend that summit. There's also Youth in Action Awards. So there's four pillars. So say you're really passionate about healthy living and what you've done in your county, you can use that and apply for this award and then you can become a spokesperson for something that you're really passionate about. So how is what I'm doing in 4-H now gonna help me in my lifetime? So all of the opportunities in this presentation will set you above the rest. You'll gain skills and memories and you'll gain so much experience. So like I said, imagine being in an interview and being able to talk about your experience in 4-Hs and that will set you above everybody else who's interviewing because maybe they didn't take advantage of their activities like you did in 4-H. So for example, we know a lot of um, famous people, they may be singers or actors or there's, but there's also people who are working in STEM and maybe agriculture. So these are two different scales of the field, but 4-H had the, the opportunities to help prepare them for their lifetime and it can do the same for you. So I like this quote because it says, start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. So you can do this with 4-H because you can take advantage of these opportunities and they will be so beneficial for your future. And the same goes for all your other activities. Say you're in a sport and you really like that sport and you want to pursue it. So talk to your coach, go to skills camps, maybe um, gain connections from people who are in the in industry and see how they can help you out. So I know I threw a lot of information at you, um, but these are ways to stay in tune. My favorite is Instagram because they post regular updates on when stuff comes out, when different stuff is due. You can also check the website for all the information. There was links on every slide. So, um, and if you maybe hit an obstacle, just don't back down. Maybe talk to your educator, talk to people who have been on these experiences or bringing something to your county. For it is designed to have people and the resources available to help you succeed. All right, so, uh, is it Thomas or Blake that's keeping track of time? It's fine. Okay. Then we have about eight more minutes. Eight, okay, we have plenty of time. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is this is just sort of a bit of downtime since we kind of that was kind of a barrage of information we just threw at you guys. Um, uh, we're gonna give you some time. If you have um, you know, pen and paper near you, that's good. Uh, also your phone will work is basically what we're gonna have you all do is write or text yourself something. Yeah, we're giving you permission to use your phones during a lesson. It's a big deal, big deal. Um, but, we're going to uh, give you the opportunity to write or text yourself a message of what you want to achieve in the future. So we're going to give you, you know, some time to think, you know, for yourselves, you know, like three, you know, three or so minutes, um, but no pressure, you know, and you don't, it can be personal, you know, so you don't have to share it with everyone else in the group. It can be something personal, but still, if you want to share it to the group, don't be shy, you know. So I'll just, I'll just give you some time, you all some time to think for to yourself. Yeah, and these can be short term or long term goals. That too, that too.
Okay, so it looks like some of you are finishing up. Is there anybody who would like to share what they put? You can put it in the chat or unmute yourself. You definitely don't have to if it was personal. Really quick, here's your five minute morning, Rebecca and Peyton. Okay, thanks, Blake. Thomas said to pursue my future with hope and flexibility. That's a really good point. Like Peyton said in his presentation, there's um, kind of mindset you can have and flexibility is definitely one of them because you are gonna face obstacles, but there are ways to move around them. So I kind of made a long-term goal. I'm going into my senior year and like Peyton said, I struggle with procrastination a little bit. So through my senior year, I really want to be diligent with everything I do. I don't want to procrastinate because I've got a lot going on. I mean, I'm going to be applying for, for college and everything. So I need to have my mind in the right place. Anybody else who would like to share? Um, I'd like to get myself a whiteboard to kind of keep track of my daily goals to <laughs> because I am terrible at keeping track of stuff. Well, welcome to the club. It's a great, it's one of the best Christmas gifts I ever got. You know, I, I'm not joking. I got it for Christmas and it was uh, one of the best gifts I ever got. So it, you know, just it's flexible. It's that's what's great about it. So. Good yeah, club, Peyton got me into it. <laughs> yeah. So Alice said, I want to work at a job or on a project that helps as many people as possible and that truly makes a difference in my community. That's really good. I wish you the best in that. That'll be really fulfilling. Okay, so with that, I just want to say that this was an, an individual activity. So you took the time to reflect on yourself. But this can also be beneficial with a group. So say you're at a 4-H meeting or any other thing you're involved with and you may face a problem, sometimes it's easier to work with others and brainstorm. Maybe have a piece of paper sitting out and write down everything you're facing and then come up with solutions. So that is a great way to face obstacles because it's really easy when we come to a problem to stress out and just be so focused on the problem that we forget to think of solutions. So slowing down and brainstorming or reflecting on what is going on is a great way to overcome them because when heading into your future, there's a lot that can go wrong, but there is a lot that can go right. And so we hope that these were just some ways that will make it a little easier on you guys and hopefully help you feel a little bit more prepared. But yeah. Um... I guess since we're kind of wrapping up here, um, does anyone have any parting questions that they have, you know, about the presentations, mine or Rebecca's or Jenga or anything really? We love feedback, so don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, with that, Peyton and I will head out. Thank you guys so much. We hope you enjoy the rest of your conference and we hope you have fun on your next game before your next field session starts. Yeah. Bye, uh, guys. Bye, guys. It was nice talking with you.